What our team has developed is a class of uh, precious metal coatings that have extraordinary wear resistance. Precious metal coatings are found in everything from consumer electronics like cell phones and computers you know, to wind turbines and, and spacecraft. Uh, our team at Sandia spent decades understanding the wear metal. So recently we uh, learned of some theory that pointed us towards a new class of metal alloys that have extraordinary thermal stability, meaning they can resist very high temperatures without degrading. We recognize that this is really a major component of how precious metal coatings lose their desirable properties when they're used in electrical contexts. So because of all these things together, our perspective enabled the connection between these fundamental metallurgical theories and the tribological performance or the friction and wear behavior. So using state-of-the-art experimental and computational tools available at Sandia, we created a platinum gold alloy. And this is one of many possible elemental combinations of this class of stable nanocrystalline alloys that is covered by our RP. But the only one that is made of precious metals. So of course, this is why they are ideal for electrical contact applications. We then demonstrated that these alloys indeed showed the lowest wear rate of any metal ever recorded. So trying to understand how valuable this technology is is a little difficult because their performance improvement over the standard alloys used is so non-incremental. But if you look at how much gold is used today in electronics, again, everything from cell phones, personal computers, wind turbines, you can calculate at least a conservative estimate. Approximately 300 metric tons of gold are used in electronics every year. It's a very large number. Other studies have suggested that approximately half of that material is used in thin films for electrical connectors. The material costs alone, ignoring ancillary costs, for example, deposition or synthesis, puts the annual economic value of the conventional gold alloy technology at around 6.3 billion per year. We showed that these platinum gold alloys are extremely wear resistant. Uh, a conservative estimate is that it's 10 times better than gold coatings that are traditionally used, but we have indications that it's even 100 times better. So one simple estimate to get a value proposition of this IP is to say you can use a tenth of the thickness of the coatings. So you can already see that that's a huge savings potential. But we can put some numbers to this as well. If you consider that platinum is about 40% cheaper than gold, then simply switching from gold coatings to these platinum gold coatings would be an annual savings of about $2.2 billion every year. It's about 35%. But again, that's not even considering that you can make these coatings a tenth of the thickness. If you consider all this together, the potential savings, again, just for materials, is about 95%, or about $5.9 billion per year. This alone explains the value proposition of our technology. But there are more aspects to the value proposition of our IP. Because these alloys far perform gold alloys in other ways, for example, retaining their strength at higher temperatures, they also have extremely high thermal stability. Also, these alloys have extraordinary fatigue resistance. So all these additional benefits translate to non-obvious opportunities for the use of these materials in applications that were simply not feasible or economically viable for traditional gold coatings. For example, one exciting opportunity in consumer electronics is using these as power delivery conductors for flexible electronics. For example, foldable screens and cell phones or maybe even wearable electronics. This is another example of non-incremental radical insertion opportunities. In a world moving rapidly towards electrification and greater efficiency of resource utilization, this IP is ideally suited to make a big impact.